What's up guys, this is Tech It Out, and today I'm going to be showing you how to turn any old Windows computer into your own home server. So, let's get started. Okay, so what exactly do I mean by setting up a server from your Windows computer? So for this video specifically, I'm going to be showing you how to set up an SMB share, or uh, in more English terms, I'm going to be showing you how to host files locally over your network, meaning from any computer in your local network, whether that's Wi-Fi or plugged in by the wire, you can get to all the same files that are on your server. So for my case, I use this server to edit my videos. I have two hard drives. They're not set up in a RAID, which maybe they should be or will be in the future, but right now they're not set up in a RAID and I edit all my video and even some audio projects off of this server. So I'm going to be showing you how I set it up for that. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is of course go ahead and set up your computer, make sure it's plugged into internet, and then make sure you have a monitor and mouse and can actually access your computer. First thing we're going to do is open our command prompt. Just type CND and you can get to your command prompt here. And we're going to type ipconfig. And what this is going to allow us to do is see our current network configuration. So the main thing that we want to look for is this address right here, 10.0.0. Point six, and this right here, the default gateway. The default gateway is going to be how we access our router. Now this can be a little tricky depending on what Wi-Fi router you have and you may need to go look on it. Some routers will have the administrative username and password on the side of it or on the bottom of it or maybe even on the top of it depending on what router you have. And some routers you set that up when you first set up your router and if you don't know your administrative password that is something you'll have to know so you'll probably have to set it up again so now that we know our default gateway that is our router's IP address we're gonna go into our browser and type that in so minus 10.0.0.1 you can see I've been there many times and it's gonna ask me to sign in now for mine the username and password is literally admin and then the password is password so I just hit sign in that's the default and what we're going to do is create a static IP address for our server. So that means that the IP address of it never changes on your network. So you can always access it in the same place. So for my router in particular, I go to advanced setup, LAN setup, and then we see this thing called address reservation. This is what's going to be slightly complicated. If you don't have the same router I do, you're just going to have to do some research on your router on how to do this. The only things that should be any different is the fact that you'll most likely have to manually input your IP address, your MAC address, and the name of the device that you are trying to set a static IP for. So for my router, it's extremely easy. It's as simple as selecting my server, which is titled Joseph Server, since that's my name. So I click on the server and I click add. And so now there is a static IP address set up on the router side. Okay, so now that our static IP is set up, we can go ahead and close out of here and go into our internet settings. So open up settings, go to network and internet. And for me, I am using ethernet on this computer. For your server, I would highly, highly recommend using ethernet because if you are trying to run a server off Wi-Fi, well, that's certainly not optimal and you will get very slow transfer speed. So I'm gonna go ahead and click properties on this ethernet port. So now we're gonna hit edit on this IP address assignment. Since we just made a static IP on the network side, we're gonna do essentially the same thing on the computer side. So on IPv4, turn that on, and we're going to make our address uh, basically what it says here in the command prompt. So it says IPv4 address 10.0.0.6. So that's gonna go in your IP address. Your subnet prefix length is almost always going to be 24. And then your gateway is your default gateway that's right here in your terminal. That also is your router's address. And for the DNS server, I'm just going to put 8.8.8.8. .8 that is Google's DNS server. And you can hit save. And now your IP address is fully static and ready to go. Now we can move on to setting up the shared folders. Okay, so now the somewhat complicated part is over. Now we can actually go about sharing files to our network. So I'm going to make the shared file that I want to share with everyone on this disk one here. 
and I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. I'm going to create a new folder and call it um, shared, let's call it shared files. Okay, so before we share this, I'm going to make a document or two, test doc one, just so I can show you that the uh, sharing actually works. Okay, so I made two different documents here. Now I'm going to show you how to share the folder. All right, so looking at our folder here, we're gonna go down to properties and hit sharing. Now this is actually quite simple. There's a few other options you can do with it, but first we're just gonna hit share and you can choose the people to share with. So right now it is just going to share with people that use this Microsoft account, the same account that this computer is on. And it's now going to share it under shared files, Joseph server slash shared files and hit done. Now, technically your folder is being shared. And now that the file is shared, I'm just going to show you some basic security. You can just leave the default setup. So by default, your the server that you're using, the system and the administrators can all access the shared folder as well as the account that I just created it in. So this account right here is my Microsoft account that I use to log in to my server and that is also going to be the account that you use to log in from any other computer. Basically when you click on the shared folder it's going to ask you to log in and you're going to have to use this account's credentials which I'm about to show you. All right, so now that our folder is shared, we're going to try to access it on another computer. So I'm gonna type double backslash and then type in the IP address of your computer, that IPv4 address that we set earlier, and hit enter. And as you can see, here's my other two shared uh, folders from before, and here's the folder that we just made called shared files, and here are the documents that I made, tech it out sharing and test doc one. All right, so now I'm on a Mac. Now we're just gonna open up Finder and hit go, connect to server. So you can either use the name of your server or you can use the IP address. SMB colon slash slash and then type in the IP address and hit connect. Hit connect again and it's going to ask you for the username and password. The reason it didn't on my other computer is because it's on the same account already, so it just automatically logs it in. So for the name, I'm going to put in that email that I showed you earlier, had permission. Type in the email and password, or rather the account information for your actual server, and now we can hit connect. And now you can see our three different shared files here or shared folder, so I'm gonna hit shared files, which is the one that we just made, and there are our documents. We can also go ahead and make a new folder if we want to, we can just make it within here, and now you can actually go over back to the server on the shared part here, and you can see all of your shared folders. So if we look over here to our server, you can see that this test folder that I just made is right here. If I delete it, it should delete on the Mac screen as well. And it did. So there you go. So by now you should have a successful SMB share working from your home computer, which is now a server. Now all you have to do is just set your computer to never sleep and your files will always be available. There will be quite a few more videos coming up on the server in the future. One of those being how I actually edit my videos off of the server without having any of the files on my computer. I will make a video on that ASAP. But thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and drop a like on this video. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comments below and I will get to them as soon as I can. So thank you so much for watching this. I'll catch you in the next one.